Hi everyone, today we're going to continue talking about plant reproduction. Specifically today, we're going to look at fertilization in flowers, the development of fruit and seeds. If you need to find me or get a hold of me if you're having problems, you can see my email address is on the screen. If you haven't already, please gather up your materials. You're going to need your pencil, a science notebook, and some color pencils. Let's start out with a little review. Hopefully you've been looking at this flower diagram and you have it in your notes already. Uh, this is a, almost precisely what the diagram you may see on an eventual quiz or test would look like. So, question number one, uh, name flower part number six. Flower part number six. Flower part number six is all the male parts put together. Remember six consists of seven and eight together. Hopefully you know that that is the Stamen. Let's look at question two. Question two says name flower part number one. Of course, number one, you can tell by this bracket, includes two, three, four, and number five. Flower part number one, what's the name? That is, of course, the carpal, sometimes called the pistol. Let's look at flower part number four. So flower part number four, remember, we said is this protective chamber. It protects these structures that are inside. Our part number four is the ovary. So what is the function? What is the purpose of flower part number 10? So these brightly colored uh, and fragrant are uh, you know, things that smell good. What is our function here? Of course, this is used to attract pollinators, mostly insects. These are the petals. So um, used to attract pollinators. What is the function of flower part number eight? Flower part number eight. So number eight, that is part, of course, of number six. So we know it's a male part. We said this is a stamen. And it's this little knob-like structure at the top, which we call an anther. But what's its function? This, of course, produces pollen. Okay, so our anther produces. It creates the male reproductive cell. And finally, what is the function of flower part number two? So we're up here now. This is part of the female uh, reproductive parts. And flower part number two up here, up top. Of course, this, this is called the stigma. This uh, receives or gathers pollen. When pollen makes it from the anther, this male part here that, where it's produced, to here, uh, to the stigma, which it receives or gathers the pollen, we say that pollination has occurred. Let's take a look at some objectives for today for fertilization in flowers, development of fruits and seeds. Our first objective will be to explain the process of fertilization in flowering plants. And this means that we're going to look at pollen tube growth. The second objective today will be to explain which flower part develops into a fruit. So when we look at a flower, one of those parts of the flower is going to develop or become a fruit, which is kind of incredible. If you think about a watermelon, those are huge fruits. Um, that comes from one of those flower parts that we looked at last time, that entire watermelon. We need to be able to explain which flower part develops into seeds. So we have, we got to be able to like look at a flower and know, oh, that's going to become the fruit. We also have to know which flower parts are going to become the seeds. And finally, we need to be able to explain how fruits are an adaptation that benefit plants. So we need to know why fruits, why does a plant go through the trouble of, of making those? Let's start here. So we're looking at this fertilization. So here we have an anther, and we can see some pollen grains coming out of it. And we have um, a one, one piece of pollen that has landed up here on this stigma. Okay, So remember, from when pollen moves from here to here, we say that that's pollination. Once the stigma, once, excuse me, the pollen lands on the stigma, uh, there's going to be a change that happens in the flower. So this change is going to cause... Um, a pot, something called a pollen tube to begin growing down through 
this hollow connecting tube down through our style. So there's going to be a tiny tube that leaves this pollen grain and it's going to begin growing. and It's going to move down through the style. Now, let's go over here and look. So here comes this pollen tube that grew out of that grain of pollen. It's going to go down through the, through the ovary inside of the ovary and it's going to be looking for that pollen tube knows somehow to be able to grow uh, toward one of these ovules. Now remember the ovules contain those female reproductive cells. Fertilization is when the male reproductive cells which we know are in the pollen are united or joined with the female cells. So if the ovules contain the female cells um, we know that we've created this pollen tube now so we've got this tiny tube that goes down and it's going to connect up with one of these ovules that contain the egg cells. Finally, after this connection is complete, once this tiny tube has grown, which happens really quickly, strangely enough, very, very fast, one of the fastest things in the natural world, uh, you're going to have those male reproductive cells that are going to make their way down this tube and they're going to make their way up to this ovule and once inside that ovule, that male reproductive cell will be united with the female rep reproductive cell. And they, we, we will say that fertilization uh, has occurred. So pollination and then the pollen tube grows and connects up with an ovule. And then the male reproductive cell is going to make its way down this pollen tube and into one of those ovules and unite with an egg. And there's your fertilization for a flower. Very quick process. Let's take a look at what this might look like. The flower is pollinated and the pollen lands here, but it still isn't fertilization. The nucleus in the pollen still has to reach the nucleus in the egg down here. Now the pollen grows a long tube like a long straw which funnels the nucleus to the egg. Seen under a microscope, these pollen grains are germinating. Pollen tubes are growing from the pollen grains. The male nucleus from the pollen passes down the tube on its way to the female egg cell where they will fuse and fertilization will be complete. So after fertilization, which we just saw, uh, when the male and female uh, reproductive cells are united, uh, we need to start looking at the changes that happen in the flower, okay? So immediately, immediately after uh, we have this unification, this fertilization, you're going to see that many of the petals are going to, be, going to begin to fall away, okay? So the petals themselves, they're no longer needed. We've had pollination and fertilization, so you're going to see that mostly uh, you're going to have this structure fall away, which is only going to leave this ovary and with the ovules inside of it. Oftentimes you'll see the sepals will stay as well, but the rest of the flower will die, will wither and begin to fall away, leaving only this part on the plant. So we'll only have the ovary, the ovules, and sometimes the sepals will stay behind. Um, after, after that fertilization, this part, this outer chamber that was used to protect these female rep reproductive cells, our ovary, is begin to, going to begin to swell. Um, and it is going to swell and swell and swell. And it's, a become, it's going to become so much larger. Um, so it might start out, this entire ovary might start out as big as um, maybe the, the, a piece of lead from your pencil, uh, sort of that thickness but it may end up being bigger than your hand or even bigger. So after fertilization, the ovary is going to swell and that entire ovary is going to become the fruit. So like in a tomato, this entire structure, the, the fruit, the tomato itself was the ovary. Remember the rest of the flower had dropped away, leaving only this to swell up into a fruit. So um, I guess we could say that the ovary after fertilization becomes the fruit. Now if we look inside of the ovary, this structure may look familiar now. If we look inside of that ovary, we would have found the ovules in the flower. Um, 
any of those fertilized ovules uh, or any of the ovules that had fertilized eggs are then going to become seeds. These are going to become, uh, you know, fertilization is going to lead to the development of an embryo. And we know that embryos, baby plants, are inside of seeds. So any one of those uh, female reproductive cells that were fertilized is going to become a seed. And it would make sense that we find seeds inside of the fruit. So if the ovary was the fruit, that means that the ovules uh, then become the seeds. So one of the things that I think um, is interesting to look at, and you know, we can we can sometimes, particularly on things like apples and tomatoes, uh, depending on how the fruit is picked, many of the fruits that we eat, we can still see some of those flower parts on there that are still recognizable. Um, so the next time you get ready to uh, eat a fruit, I want you to look and see if you can find any evidence, particularly of these sepals. See if you can find those sepals that were once part of that flower that were used to protect the flower while it was developing. See if you can still find them on there. Let's take a look at a, at a time-lapse video. Remember, time-lapse simply means that uh, we can speed up time by quite a bit. We can watch something that might take weeks or even months in a very short period. So we're going to watch, this is a, a blossom on a fruit tree, a pear tree, and we're going to watch the, the flowers. We're going to watch them open up. And when they open up inside, of course, there in the middle, we're going to be able to see the stigma and a little bit of the style. We can see those anthers uh, that are up there with the pollen. You can actually see the pollen grains on them. And that flower is going to open up. And with many fruit trees, uh, we have clusters of these flowers that will open up together. Eventually, those flowers are going to die away. And I want you to watch you to watch here. I want you to watch after the flowers die away. This means fertilization has happened. I want you to watch what happens to this ovary. Uh, so you can see this ovary is beginning to swell and it's beginning to develop into something, um, something much larger. And that's beginning to look very pear-like. So really just after a few weeks, you're going to see that ovary develop into... So as a reminder, uh, the fruit comes from the ovary, which swells up after fertilization. And inside that ovary, we're going to find seeds. And seeds, of course, uh, come from those ovules that were inside the ovary to begin with and contain the female reproductive cells. So what do we use fruits for? Uh, plants put a lot of energy into producing fruit. And quite frankly, fruits, once again, are used for attraction. Remember, plants can't move around in their environment. So plants produce many of these fruits to attract animals. So why? Why attract them? So fruits, of course, are a good food source for animals. So the animals are going to show up to, uh, to eat these fruits. Uh, this is about survival for the animals. So, you know, this we can see here this bird is, uh, is swallowing this fruit whole. Uh, but when the, front, the, the animals eat the fruit, they will also most often eat the seeds. So we know that those seeds are there inside of that fruit. Um, after they eat that fruit, the seeds are going to be able to move through the digestive system unharmed. Um, the seeds have that tough seed, seed coat on them, so most often they're able to survive digestion. Uh, eventually, uh, you know, what was the fruit is going to become excrement. Um, it's going to pass out the, the other end of the digestive tract. And at that point, you know, this bird should be a long distance away from where it first uh, ate this fruit. So when those seeds leave uh, the bird's digestive tract, it may be many miles away. It's a very clever way that plants are able to uh, move their seeds and spread their seeds to many other parts of their environment. So fruits uh, are not just to help other animals. Fruits are about spreading seeds, most often through animals. And those animals are often larger animals. Those are not uh, insect-like pollinators. Uh, this is the only picture I could find. Some of you have ran into scat like this before. Um, but you, if, you, uh, if you take a walk around, you've, you've, you've walked outside at all, you have probably found something that looks like this. This is bear poop, uh, sometimes called scat. 
And you can see that this bear has been eating lots of fruit. You can see all those seeds in there. And so this is a really good way to distribute your seeds if you're a plant. Move them about your environment. Here's the last thing that I want us to take a look at today. And, you know, when I finish uh, just briefly looking at this, I want you to stop the video and draw this diagram in your notebook. This, this is going to be part of the notes that you'll need for today. So we, we know that plants begin with a seed. Uh, we talked earlier in the year about a seed uh, needing to germinate or needing to sprout, which means that that seed has found the right conditions, enough warmth and enough moisture to sprout. It's going to become a young plant. Okay, so we're looking at this life cycle. So we move from a seed to a young plant. That plant is going to grow and it's going to develop. Uh, it's just going to become a mature plant. Once that plant is mature, uh, it's going to produce flowers. Okay, uh, from flowers, we're, we're looking to move to this process called pollination, where we have to have that male reproductive cell from an anther uh, move to a stigma, which is that female reproductive uh, cell. Uh, from the flower, uh, we're looking to get fertilization. Uh, the fertilization is that uniting of male and female cells, which is going to produce our fruit. Inside of that fruit, we know it's going to be seeds. Those seeds should be dispersed through their environment. And this is going to happen uh, for many generations of plants. Okay, So this is what we call the life cycle of a flowering plant, from germination to growth and development, pollinization, pollination, <laughs> fertilization, and seed dispersal. So take a moment and write this down. You're going to need to stop the video, and these are the only things that I need you to copy into your notebook today other than that diagram. Uh, you're going to need to copy these exactly. Please use underlining. Make these notes stand out. You will need these notes on your next quiz. Go ahead and stop the video and continue it when you are finished with these notes. All right. So we're not doing a just for fun lab today. We're doing a just for fun movie. Uh, you need to have access to Disney Plus, And I want you to search for the movie Wings of Life. Wings of Life. Um, this is a movie about pollinators and about uh, the plant life cycle. I think that most of you would enjoy this movie. Uh, you're going to see... You're going to see things in the world slightly differently than you've seen them before. So it's called Wings of Life. Uh, and it's on Disney Plus if you have that. If you don't have Disney Plus, you can just go to YouTube and you can get lots of free clips there. Um, but if, if at all possible, search for this movie. I just looked for it and it is on Disney Plus. Great movie to watch. So guys, that's it for today. Um, until next time, stay curious.